sisters, cherished friends. You just heard Shragi Gestetner singing Rachem, Hashem have mercy. Shragi is one of the 44, about 44 or 45, it's unclear whether it's 44 or 45 victims of last night's tragedy in Meron, which you just saw some flashes, pictures. I'm sorry that some of them are so graphic, just to understand what we're talking about. That maybe Israel's worst civilian tragedy ever. And didn't plan this podcast. Today's our 250th podcast unplanned. 250 is the Hebrew numerical equivalent for ner. Ner is a candle. And so making this podcast right before Shabbat as a memorial candle for all the victims and also as a prayer for the dozens that are still fighting for their lives out of the more than 150 people hospitalized all over hospitals in Israel in the north. We have to ask ourselves one thing, is it enough? Let, let's put this in a proportion. Okay, we've got 44 people dead. In 1991, there was the Gulf War in January 1991, Saddam Hussein, attacked Israel with 39 Scud missiles. 39 Scud missiles landed in the land of Israel. They destroyed whole apartment buildings in Ramat Gan, right next to the Diamond District. Nobody was killed. One Scud missile landed in the American army in Saudi Arabia, and there were 25 American soldiers killed and 225 maimed. After 39 Scud missiles, each one with a 250 kilogram payload, 550 pounds of explosives and East missile, there was one person killed. Let's continue putting it here in the south of Israel, Shderot, Ashkelon, Ashdod, in the last 10 years, with all the rockets from Gaza, with everything that's been going on and all the bomb shelters and all the sirens, less than a dozen people have been killed. And last night in Miran, last night in Miran, 44 people killed with beautiful people in, in all of Israel. And we have to ask ourselves, what is going on? Because if we don't ask ourselves what is going on, we should danger of more tragedies like this happening, heaven forbid, a million times, heaven forbid. But this is what the prophet Isaiah chastised says, Ami loid bonan, that my nation did not open their eyes, they didn't observe, they didn't see the Ben Shem's message. So what is the Shem telling us? Why log Omer? Why on Rabbi Shimon's gravesite, the holy gravesite of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai? Why? Log Omer. During log Omer, the Gemara tells us that Rabbi Shimon, but that Rabbi Akiva's 24,000 students died. With holy students, holy Torah scholars, why they die? Because they didn't properly respect one another. They didn't love each other. And the Torah commands it love each other. The Torah doesn't say, oh, limit it to the people of your own group, the people that you were born with, the people of your own synagogue, whether your, your own No, every other human being, you have to love like you love yourself. And here we go, one tragic night in Lagba Omer and Miran, because it's after the 33 days of Omer, this is the Yortzad Rebbe Shem Yochai, and on the 33rd day of the Omer, when we're supposed to begin joy, joyful, we haven't learned anything from the 32 days where all joy was curtailed and music was curtailed, can't sing music, can't dance, can't make weddings. What's going on here? They didn't respect one another. Let's go even further. Rabbi Akiva's students died less than 100 years after the destruction of our second holy temple. The Gemara tells us that the second holy temple was destroyed because of intramural hate. Sinas chinam. This is poison. When you say sinas chinam, it's like saying gas chamber. Gas chamber. Intramural hate is equivalent of saying gas chamber. In fact, it might even be worse than a gas chamber. 
and we haven't learned? <laughs> Look at Ahab. The biggest idolater, the biggest idol worshiper in all of Jewish history is the seventh king of the kingdom of Israel. Then because of intramural hate, Israel was split into two kingdoms. The southern kingdom was Judah. That was the two tribes of Benjamin and Judah. And the northern kingdom, the 10 northern tribes, that ultimately they were all exiled. This was the kingdom of Israel, kingdom of Judah, kingdom of Israel. The seventh king of Israel was named Ahab. His wife was named Jezebel. His wife is the archetype of a wicked woman. Ahab was the worst idolater in the history of the Jewish people. Ahab won all his wars. He won all his wars. And the Gemara tells us that the reason he won all his wars is because in his generation, there was no intramural hate. People respected one another. No one tattletailed at the time. Ovadia the prophet who was, he was the only, one of the only ones left loyal to Hashem. He hid, he hid a hundred prophets in a cave and he fed them bread and water in time of famine. If someone would have told Jezebel that Ovadia the prophet has people hidden in a cave, oh, she would have paid, given them millions for, to, for, for bounty to turn them in. Okay, nobody opened their mouth. Nobody opened their mouth. They won all their wars. And this is the worst idolater in Jewish history. Yeah, but it weren't. So what do we learn from this? We learn that Hashem suffers everything. Okay, so you messed up and you didn't eat something that was perfectly kosher and you forgot to turn on a light on Shabbat and, and maybe you, you, you did something else wrong that the Torah says that wrong or, or you got an urge and you ate during a fast day. Hashem forgives, Hashem forgives. You have to make tshuva. Say, Hashem, I'm sorry, I messed up, make tshuva. But there's one thing Hashem doesn't forgive. Hashem doesn't forgive when you hate a fellow Jew. Because that fellow Jew is Hashem's son and daughter. How do you feel when somebody hates your son and daughter? Hashem can't stand that. And so he wakes us up. He gives us a slap. When somebody's got shell shock in the war, what do you do? You slap on the face to wake up on. We're all shell shocked. Who can afford, who can afford to hate another human being? Who can afford, especially to hate another Jew? And then have had enough? And, and look what's happening. Okay, here's the news of the Jewish people. Aguda and Degel, the Hasidim and the Lithuanians, they can't stand each other. What do you mean they can't stand each other? They're fighting their two different factions. Hold it. They both keep Torah. They're, they're the, 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 uh, the ultra-religious faction in Knesset. Oh, no, what, why are you even talking about that? Let's talk about within Aguda, within the Hasidim themselves, within the Hasidim themselves. Let a Belzer Hasid, the Gur Hasid, they're going at it because this one wants number four and this one's number three and this one wants this budget and this one wants that budget. But hold it. What do you want? Who gets a Gur, a Gur Hasid, a Belzer Hasid? Look at Gur within Gur itself. There's this Rebbe and there's that Rebbe. And if you go to a different Rebbe, we're going to punch you your cars or we're going to beat you up. We're going to do everything. Hold it. Stop. Time out on the field. Oh, wait a second. So the Lithuanians, the Lithuanians, you've got Degel. Okay, Degel, the, the mainstream Yeshiva fashion. And then you've got the Peleg that they call, the, the, the Degel calls the Peleg, the terrorists. And, and, and they're at each other's necks. Within that, we're not even talking about something. Oh, don't even talk about the religious and non-religious. And then no, the national religious, oh, the national religious, if you've got a great big keep on your head and, and you belong to the group of Basmal Smut, smut rich, you're one thing. And then if you've got a little keep on the head, you're called modern Orthodox, you belong to Naftali Bennett, you're something else. And they're split too. Everybody's split. Who hold it? Then there's Zionists and anti-Zionists. Oh, you talk about uh, Satmir. We don't, we don't recognize the Zionistic state. And in Chabad, we serve in the army and we go everywhere. But what's going on? They all have their opinions. You know why they have their opinions? Because this one was born to a Satmar father, and this was born to a Chabad father, and this was born to a Ger father, and this was born to a Belzer father. And I tell one thing, and they all have different Rebbes. Because you have different Rebbes, you're allowed to kill each other. You know what they all are? Everybody's like sheep. This one's in this flock of sheep, and this one's in this flock of sheep. So this one, he doesn't know he's going after his leader. And he's looking at the world from this hill where his pasture is. He sees the world at this angle. And this other flock of sheep sees the world at their angle. And person's on one hill. And it says, you don't see the world right. It looks like this. A person in another world, they see the world like this. But there's someone that sees the world from, from way up. This is the Moshe Rabbeinu. This is the Moshe Rabbeinu of our generation. Who's Moshe Rabbeinu? That Moshe Rabbeinu. And we have our Torah, and we have our Gemara, and we have our Shulchan Aruch. This is what we listen. So I'm uh, telling everyone, from this moment on, 
My only opinion is the opinion of Torah, the opinion of Shulchan Aruch, nothing else matters because someone has a different path. So no longer, don't follow an opinion because opinions lead to hate. If you have an opinion, you follow Moses, you follow Rashi, you follow Tosfus. Oh, now you want to tell me so Rashi and Tosfus don't agree? Okay, if Rashi and Tosfus don't disagree, then we have the Machaber and the Shulchan Aruch that tells us what to do. Okay, and if the Machaber and the Ramah don't agree, then the Sephardim follow the Machaber and the Ashkenazim follow Ramah and the Gemara tells Elu ve'elu divrelu kim chayim. This and this are words of the living God that each one, okay, you look at it in the army. A paratrooper has to learn how to jump out of a plane. A sailor on a ship doesn't need to learn how to jump out of a plane, but he sure needs to know how to swim. Uh, people have different jobs, they do different things. But what's going on here? We're all busy fighting each other. Wait a second, go back to the Gomorrah. And the Gomorrah tells us any generation that doesn't build, rebuild the Holy Temple is tantamount to a generation that destroyed it. So who can walk around? Oh, I'm great, I'm important, I do this, I do that. If we don't build the Holy Temple, then we are accused, our generation, of destroying it. And if we destroy the Holy Temple, we pay the price. So in order to rebuild the Holy Temple, we have to take away the core reason that the Holy Temple was destroyed. And that is seen as chinam. That is intramural hate. Okay. So why all this happening on Rabbi Shimon's yard site? You know what the Gomorrah and Tractate Shabbos tells Rabbi Shimon? Omar Rabbi Shimon, call Yisrael Bnei Malachim Heim. Rabbi Shimon says that every single Jew is a son or daughter of the king. The king, son or daughter of the king. You understand? You're a son of the king, you're a daughter of the king. And that means that we're all brothers and sisters. People think, oh, look at Laser. He's got this nice Baal Shuvah talk. Beloved brothers, beloved sisters. No, it's Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It's not my words. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And this is the way we have to feel. And Hashem is yelling at us. Do not yell at your brother and sister. Do not speak bad at brother and sister. Why did the Chofetz Chaim stop everything he was doing? Chofetz Chaim, he could have written commentaries in all of Gomorrah. Why did he concentrate on slander? Loshan Hara. Because he knew this was the reason that at 24,000 students, the holy students of Rebbe Kiva died. And this was the reason the temple was destroyed. And he knew Hashem took him away right before the Holocaust. So he wouldn't see the Holocaust. Okay, but he knew this was on the way. Chafetz Chaim, he had vision. He was the one in our generation that was standing on top of the hill, could see everyone. And he wrote this. And Hashem is yelling at us right now? Don't think I have to talk about the Chafetz Chaim and go back to 1933, <laughs> the year the Chafetz Chaim left this world. But Hashem is saying, what now? 2019, COVID 2019, COVID 2020, COVID 2021. What did Hashem do to us? Hashem took masks and put them on our mouth. Oh, that's not enough. We didn't understand yet. We didn't understand yet. So Hashem threw us out of synagogue and locked down our synagogues. It was our own personal temple in our own neighborhood was locked down. We had to dive it from our living rooms and from our balconies and from everywhere. Okay. And then if that wasn't enough, we don't learn from Rashbi on Lagba Omer. We don't learn from Rashbi. When are we going to wake up? This is terrible. When are they going to wake up? I want to make a declaration, and my neighbors might not like it, and people might not like it, but at age 72, I'm not out to win a popularity contest, and I promise you I'm not running for office. Okay. And this, you might not like it, the members of, of Knesset, of the religious parties, but I want to tell you something. There is a member of Knesset named Yair Lapid. I want to tell you something. I love Yair Lapid. He's my brother. And you know something? Does anybody realize that Yair Lapid grew up in a home where his father in Hungary saw the Nazis kill his mother and father at nine years old? Okay, does anybody know where Yair Lapid is coming from? I want to tell you something else. There's somebody who says, it, oh, anti-religious rhetoric all the time. His name is a Victor Lieberman. Okay, Mr. Victor Lieberman, Laser Brody loves you. Now, I don't agree with your ideology, and I don't agree with Mr. Lapid's ideology, but a Victor and Yair, you're both of my brothers, and I love you. And I'll tell you something else. But Sal Smotrich wears a different type of kippah. He's got a woven kippah. And I've got a black velvet kippah. But Salel, boy, do I love you. You are my brother. Now, tell you something else. Naftali Bellet, 
He's got a kippa that's a fourth the size of Gonzalo's and mine. And I'll tell you something, Naftali, I really love you. I've got big regard for you. You're my brother. I want to tell you something else. There's a guy in the merits party, the far left party, who all time, he says, says his rhetoric is not exactly what we believe in. His name is Yair Golan. Yair, if you're listening to this, you should know Laser Brody loves you too. He doesn't have a keeper at all. Not a woven keeper, not a tiny keeper, no keeper at all. But love him because he's my brother. He's my brother. And I'll tell you something to my friends, the Ger Hasidim. Okay, I love all you guys. I love the ones of you that are loyal to the Rebbe. And I love the ones of you that consider Rabbi Shaul Alter, the year Rebbe. And love all of you. Now, maybe you're going to beat me up. You're going to try and beat me up. Okay, and anybody's welcome. Even at 72, to come on and try and beat me up. That's fine. You're welcome. Okay. I hope I have enough courage not to hit you back. But I love you all. I love you all. And I love Satmer Hasidim, anti-Zionist Hasidim. And I love the biggest Zionists because they're all my brothers. And nobody knows what truth is, but Hashem is. Because the Gemara tells us before Mashiach, the truth is going to be torn into pieces. And everybody says the truth. No, you don't have the truth. You have the home that your father, that you were born into. And you're going the way that your father is. You're standing on your father's hill, and this one's standing on his father's hill. And you're davening in your father's shul, and you're davening in your father's shul. And maybe your father didn't have a shul, so you're not davening a shul at all. But that doesn't separate us. That doesn't separate us. It's enough hate. 2,000 years of destruction of temple, of inquisition, of pogroms, of holocaust. And we live through this. Our, our, we live through this. Okay. My mother was a holocaust survivor, but uh, I, graduate, I graduated two of Israel's seven wars. And it may be at the road. We all have, and now all of Israel is part of the tragedy. Because today in Israel, there is not a single family that doesn't know somebody that left their life that didn't come home from your own and it's all it's a trauma it's a tragedy beloved brothers and sisters isn't it enough i am boy you think it affects just us in israel a yeshiva bocher from teaneck new jersey <laughs> this is shragi gestetner from muncie new york we're all one what do you understand it we're all one it's enough on the edge of your hate this is pikuach nefesh for the good of own we have to stop right now i ask one thing i accept on myself not to say a derogatory thing about anyone, much less a Jew, and not to, any opinions, not to call out any opinions, only on my opinion, what the Torah says, what the Gemara says. And we should all from this moment pick up a Chofetz Chaim and commit ourselves to the three words the Torah commands us, v'ahavta le'echa kamocha, love your neighbors yourself, and Hashem have pity on us. And build a spring of bait the big gush and get us out of this diaspora and exile speedily in our days. Amen. Good Shabbos.